When a certain species goes extinct, it is always a tragic event. Of course, plants and animals have been going extinct before us humans were around, but we have definitely accelerated the rate of extinction. It's hard to estimate how many species go extinct each year, as we are still discovering species that are new to science. It's estimated that there are around 100 million different species on Earth, and the extinction rate is around 0.01%. At first this may not seem that bad, but this means that at least 10,000 species go extinct every year. It's estimated that this extinction rate is around 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than the natural extinction rate, and this is all because of the impact that we have on the planet. Poaching, deforestation and pollution are just some of the reasons why plants and animals go extinct, and this is not including natural pressures such as diseases and natural disasters. Even though there are warning signs all around us, people are still slow to act, and we need to change the way we live to better the health of the planet. Over the past few hundred years there have been some very famous extinctions, and the ones that hit hardest are the extinctions of very unique creatures. If a species goes extinct and it has no close relatives, the chances are that we won't see another creature like that ever again. That's why it's important that we save creatures that are one of a kind, and I will be going through just a few of them today, as I will be going through three threatened creatures with no close relatives. And for our first species we will be heading over to Madagascar, as we will be taking a look at the Ai Ai. The Ai Ai is a primate native to Madagascar, and it has many rodent-like features. One of its strangest features is its long middle finger, and it uses this finger to catch its prey. Although they will feed on fruits, nectar and fungi, they are very good at catching insect larvae. They'll tap on wood with their finger to find hollow chambers, and then they will use their long finger to hook insect larvae. For the Ai Ai this is a very rich and nutritious meal, and by feeding in this way it fills the ecological niche of a woodpecker. In the wild it can be quite hard to spot an Ai Ai, and this is not only because they're rare but they are also nocturnal. Although some people think the Ai Ai is cute, I think it's safe to say that it's not the prettiest primate in Madagascar. For hundreds of years the Malagasy people viewed them as bad omens, and as summoners of evil. Unfortunately, many Ai Ai's were killed for this reputation, and this really hasn't helped their situation. Strangely, even the Ai Ai's name is derived from folklore, as it comes from the phrase I don't know in Malagasy, and it's thought that the animal got this name because the locals were afraid to talk about it. The Ai Ai's nighttime habits make it the largest nocturnal primate, but what kind of primate is it? Well, the Ai Ai doesn't have any close relatives as it's the only member in its genus, but they are most closely related to lemurs. If the Ai Ai was to go extinct it would be tragic, as there's simply very few creatures like them. There are thought to be between 1,000 and 10,000 Ai Ai's left in the wild, and this means that the Ai Ai is currently listed as endangered. Of course there are plenty of reasons behind this, but most of them are human related. Unfortunately many Malagasy people still believe the folklore about the Ai Ai, and in some areas they are still killed on sight. The Ai Ai also isn't helped by the fact that Madagascar is an impoverished country, and many locals look to poaching to make a living. There is also a lot of slash and burn agriculture in Madagascar, and this contributes to habitat loss. Strangely, the Ai Ai has been in trouble for decades, as it was originally thought to have gone extinct in 1933. It was rediscovered in 1957, but we still haven't learnt our lesson. The Ai Ai is still threatened today and it does need your help. I have linked a few charities to help the animals in this video in the description down below, so if you want to help out you can leave a donation. It really is a shame that this animal is treated so badly because of the way it looks, as it is a very unique and interesting creature. But for our next animal we will be heading over to the Himalayas, as we will be taking a look at the red panda. Now as I'm sure many of you know, the red panda is not closely related to the giant panda, as the giant panda is a bear. The red panda was discovered in 1825, and the giant panda was discovered in 1869. The name panda was given to both species as they share similar feeding habits, but as the red panda was discovered first, you could argue it's the real panda. Even though they are quite different, the red panda and the giant panda share a similar diet, as the red panda primarily feeds on bamboo. Despite this, it will also feed on fruits, eggs, birds and small mammals, but this really makes up a very small part of their diet. The red panda has a few adaptations to help it feed on bamboo, as it has pseudo thumbs that help it grasp bamboo, and strangely it's able to digest cyanide. These creatures can digest 40 different species of bamboo, and many bamboo species contain abundant cyanide compounds. Luckily red pandas can neutralise cyanide in their guts, and turn it into a less toxic compound. As I've already covered, the red panda isn't related to the giant panda, but what exactly is it related to? Well, the red panda is the only member of its genus, and it is also the only member of its family. 
This hasn't always been the case as it has a few extinct relatives, but today it's a bit of a loner. The red panda is distantly related to raccoons, weasels and skunks, and the red panda does share a few characteristics with these creatures. It's estimated that there are less than 10,000 red pandas left in the wild, and this means that they are currently listed as endangered. Once again, there are many reasons behind this, as in the wilds, they are facing many threats. It's primarily threatened by the destruction and fragmentation of its habitat, and this coincides with the increasing human population across its range. Deforestation not only gets rid of their habitat, but it also gets rid of their primary food source. Poaching is also a major issue for this species, as 121 red panda skins were confiscated between 2008 and 2018. China is also one of the poaching capitals of the world, and the laws protecting this species in China are very weak. It's thought that the red panda's population in China has decreased by 40% in the past 50 years, and if it carries on like this, there will be none left. If the red panda were to go extinct, it really would be tragic, as not only does the red panda not have any close relatives, but it's also the last living member of a family that's been on this planet for millions of years. So really we need to do all we can to save this animal, as not only is it very cute, but it's also very unique. But for a final animal on this list, we will be heading over to South America, as the animal we will be taking a look at is the main dwarf. The mane dwarf gets its name from the mane on its neck, and this mane stands erect when it senses danger. This canine can be found in quite a few countries across South America, but the majority of its population is in Brazil. Although it's not the largest canine, it is the tallest wild canid, as it stands at almost a meter at the shoulder. These long legs help it to see above tall grasses, and this helps it locate and target its prey. The main dwarf has quite a varied diet, as although it will eat meaty food such as mammals, birds and fish, more than 50% of its diet is made up of plant matter. They'll feed on sugarcane bulbs and roots, and they also have a fruit named after them as they enjoy eating it. This diet means that they play an important role in their ecosystem, as they are quite good at dispersing seeds. Now as some of you might already know, the main dwarf is not actually a wolf. It did once have a close relative in the Falkland Islands wolf, but this species went extinct in 1876. Although it's not a very close relative, its closest relative today is the bush dog, and these two canines couldn't look any more different. Today, the maned wolf is currently listed as near threatened, with a population of around 17 to 25,000 individuals left in the wild. There are many threats that the maned wolf is facing, but of course, once again, most of these are human related. In some areas, they are poached, and they do often fall victim to car collisions. Over the years, the majority of their habitat has been turned into agricultural land, and strangely, they also face threats from domesticated dogs. These domesticated dogs can pass on diseases to the maned wolf, and this creature is poorly equipped to deal with this danger. Luckily, there is still plenty of time to help this canine, and hopefully it won't suffer the same fate as its closest relative. Relative. If you know of any other creatures that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.